Hey guys, welcome back. In this lesson, we'll look at all the necessary tools and setup you will need to proceed with the course. If you're using Windows, please proceed with this lesson. If you're using Mac or Linux, you can skip this lesson and move on to the next lesson because we'll cover the setup for Linux users in the next lesson. With the purchase of this course, you get free access to a live three-node Hadoop cluster. So the very first thing you need to do is to request access to the cluster. Simply go to hadoopinrealworld.com slash hirw dash cluster dash access and click provide me access to the cluster. Provide your details and submit the form. In few hours, we'll create an account for you in the cluster and you will receive an email with the cluster details, username and keys to access the cluster. Even if you're a student of the Hadoop Starter Kit course and have a login to the cluster, we suggest you to request access because your new account is a personalized account and you will have slightly elevated permissions on the cluster with this account. The reason for us to provide free access to a live cluster is to make Hadoop learning fast, easy, and fun as possible for our students, instead of wasting their precious time with VM images and setting up their own environment. So to collectively have a good experience with the cluster, we all should agree on to some guidelines. So here are the guidelines that we must stick to. The cluster you will be using is a shared cluster, meaning all the students of Hadoop and real world course will be sharing the cluster. And it is meant for practice and should only be used for practice. You should not rely on the cluster for any external project work from college or work, etc. Because access you will receive is a complimentary access and we reserve the right to shut down the cluster at any time. Proprietary files, data sets, scripts, or programs are strictly not allowed in the cluster, and you should not bring in any such items into the cluster. The capacity of the cluster in terms of memory, hard disk space, and CPU is limited, and hence, please do not bring big data sets into the cluster. The data sets which we use in the course are already available in HDFS, so please work with those. We also perform routine cleanup and deletion of files in the cluster across all accounts without notice to reclaim space. So we strongly recommend that you keep a backup of files outside the cluster that are important to you. We would like to keep the cluster available for all our students to use it for practice and get benefit from it. So in the interest of all, misuse of the cluster will not be tolerated and access to the cluster will be revoked if we find someone misusing the cluster. Okay. With that message, let's see how to access the cluster if you're using a Windows-based system. In the email you received about the cluster access, you will see a zip file. The zip file will have two files, one with .ppk extension and one with .pem extension. Open the zip file and keep the .ppk file in an accessible location. You can use PuTTY to access the cluster. And if you don't have PuTTY, simply go to Google and look for PuTTY download. And go to the download page and download the PuTTY for Windows. It's a tiny file and once it is downloaded, open PuTTY.exe file. Here, first make sure the connection type is SSH and the port is 22. The email you got will also have an IP address for the cluster. So enter the IP address from the email here. Then give a name to the session. I'm going to type in HRW course. And then expand SSH and go to auth and then select the .ppk file that you received. And then go back to the session again and hit save. Now we have created a new connection in PuTTY called HIRW course with the IP address and the connection type as SSH and with port 22. We have also selected the .ppk file that we got under SSH auth. Now let's double click on this connection. When you prompted for the login, type in the username that you received in the email. So here I'm going to type in HIRW. And there you go, you're logged in into the cluster. And that is it, it's super simple. If you have trouble connecting, try to ping the IP address that was sent to you in the email. If you cannot ping the address, which means you're behind a firewall that is blocking your connections to the cluster. To verify that is the case, simply try to connect from a public network, for example, from a local cafe like Starbucks. In the course, you will see me using a tool named mRemoteNG. It is a free tool and you can download it from the internet. The nice thing about the tool is when you open the tool, you will already have the connections that you created in PuTTY. And you can open multiple connections and switch between them in a tab-like interface. It's just convenient, that is all. You will also see me use a tool named WinSCP to copy or move files to and from the cluster. Again, it is a free tool and you can download it from the internet. 
It is very simple to use. Click on new and type in the host name that was sent to you. That is the IP address from your email. Make sure the port number is 22. And for the username, type in the username that was sent to you in the email. I'm going to type HRW because that is my username. And then select the private key file, which is nothing but the .ppk file. Select that and hit on save to give a name to your connection. I'm going to name it HIRW course. Hit OK and then hit login. There you go. Now you can easily copy or move files to and from the cluster. The left hand side on your screen is your local Windows system and the right hand side on your screen is the cluster. While you're there, switch to the root directory and copy the entire HIRW workshop to your local computer. Just all you have to do is drag and drop to the left hand side. It will take few minutes to copy. Any type of commands, instructions, scripts, or programs that I show in our lessons can be found in the HIRW-workshop directory. The location of the appropriate files that we see in the lesson will be mentioned in the resources section of the course, and in some cases, the file will be attached to the resource section as well for easy lookup. As you already know, this is a hands-on course and we'll see interesting project with this course. And so, we need to have our Eclipse set up to see the Java programs. If you don't have Eclipse, go to the Eclipse Downloads page. Make sure in the Downloads page, Windows is selected right here. And download Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. You can also choose to download Eclipse IDE for Java developers. But since the size difference is not that big between the two, you might as well download the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Again, make sure you're downloading for Windows version and most of us run on 64-bit OS and so select 64-bit. You'll present it with another screen and here select download again. This will download a zip file. Once downloaded, simply extract the contents of this zip file into a directory. And you'll see the contents like this. You don't have to install anything here. Just simply double click on eclipse.exe file. When Eclipse open, it will ask for the workspace directory. Here, select the workspace-course directory under hirw-workshop directory that you just copied from the cluster. So that is what I'm doing here and click OK. Now, if you're doing it for the very first time, here you will get a warning saying that the workspace is created with the older version of Eclipse and will be updated to the newer version. For that, just simply click OK. All our projects are mavenized, meaning you don't have to download any libraries on top of this for the projects to work properly. If you look at the palm.xml for a project, you will see all the dependencies that are needed for the project. And if you're using latest Eclipse, you will most likely see an error in palm.xml saying that Java tools jar is not found. For example, take a look at this project. This project is showing an error in palm.xml file. So let's open the file. And there you can see the error missing artifacts JDK tools jar. It's very easy to fix this error. Go to the palm.xml file, go to the very end, you'll see a dependency for JDK tools which is commented. Just simply remove this comment and hit save. And once you do that, the error will go away. Again, you have to do this only when you see the error, Java tools artifact is not found. That is it, you're all set. Now you have access to the cluster, you know how to copy files to and from the cluster, and also you know how to configure Eclipse. Make sure you do all the steps that we went through in this lesson before you move on to the next lesson. See you in the next lesson.